How is it possible to turn your images from this to this? Wow. And better yet, how is it possible to do so for free in under two minutes? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can edit your astrophotos with the help of a free software called Graxpert, which has quite literally revolutionized the way I edit my images. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. I'm going to be editing images today captured with my Seastar S30 and some captured with the incredible state-of-the-art telescopes hosted by Telescope Live. So there will be a variance in image data. Graxpert was initially designed as a tool to remove gradients from your astro images, which is a very common occurrence. Perhaps the target you're imaging is quite low in the horizon and you live near very light polluted areas. Maybe there's a bright moon out and your target is fairly nearby. Or maybe you just haven't corrected the tilt shift on your camera. The effect this can have on your images is devastating. So how can we fix it? Simple. Download the software, open it up, and load your chosen image. It's likely that you're going to see basically nothing. So make sure you enable at least a 10% image stretch at the bottom of your screen. Ta-da! Now, especially when it comes to images captured with the sea star, you're going to want to crop the edges ever so slightly just to get rid of these awful looking noisy patterns on the outer edges. Then open up the background extraction tab, which by the way, is pretty much all this software used to be as a feature, plain and straightforward until now when they've just taken it to the next level with all of these extra features. You'll be presented with four different methods for removing your unwanted image gradient. Normally, you'd have to select the areas that represent the general image pattern. This is to say, not the deep sky object you're imaging. You're trying to outline what this image gradient looks like, so if you highlight, for example in this image, the nebulae, then it's going to try and compensate for those varying colours. But this is part of the reason as to why this entire process can now take under two minutes, because the latest option, is AI. And it requires no further input, no display points to be added, no list of sliders to be adjusted, bar one. And it completes almost immediately. So look at that, already our image has drastically improved, but in doing so, I can't help but feel like we've lost a little bit of texture and depth in our image, which is very unfortunate. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to drag this moving slider all the way to one. Now that's much better. The key thing to note is that astrophotography is an art form. The beauty of your images is going to be subjective. The important part is to stylize your images how you enjoy them best. If someone else doesn't like them, then boo hoo. Good for them or whatever, you're always going to get comments saying you've oversaturated this or you over sharpened that, the colours are all wrong, blah 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 blah, ignore them, it's all subjective and if you need a definitive proof of that, then look no further than narrowband imaging. There's seemingly no right way to process your images. This is Graxpert's latest development, their deconvolution tool, currently only accessible by downloading their beta. Don't worry, I've attached a link in the description below. Just download whichever one corresponds to your operating system and then re boot Graxpert. You'll know it works when you're greeted with this message. Now deconvolution is an unbelievably helpful method that helps remove the blur or distortion in your images caused by atmospheric disturbance or your own optics. The most powerful demonstration of this tool is currently Russell Croman's Blur Exterminator, available for just under $100. It's a feature I've used a lot when editing in PixInsight. This is how my image of Andromeda looked before I used Blurex versus after. It's so good it can almost be referred to as a cheat code. That's how stark the difference between using it and not. Well, the new Graxpert deconvolution tool isn't as powerful, but it's still very capable of sharpening your images. With the $100 Blur X tool, it determines your FWHM for you, but Graxpert asks you to input this information yourself. The FWHM refers to the full width half maximum, and you can find this out even through the use of other free software such as Cyril. But with the context of speed in mind, I'm going to ignore finding specifics because even with the knowledge of what your image's FWHM is, it doesn't guarantee an image adjustment you're going to like. So instead, just have fun, play with the slider, find something for you that sticks. Then, when you're done, move on to the final layer of this phenomenal astro editing cake, the denoiser. Now, Seastar images are particularly noisy. They are doing the absolute best with what they've got. The images I've captured so far were done during a full moon, with lots of thin clouds passing by. So just to show off the full power of this tool, I'm going to crank it all the way up to its max setting, 1. Look at that. It's like night and day. Again, play with this until you find a setting you personally like. If you use the max setting, sure your image is going to look smooth, but it will feel like you've lost a lot of the sharpness and structure throughout the image. Personally, I always find a bit of noise good. It makes the image feel more real. I actually prefer doing background extraction, denoising, saving the image, and then playing with the deconvolution settings, but each to their own. Right, now that we've covered the basics, let's run it from start to finish as quickly as possible. Let's start the clock. So 
So that's how long it takes to edit your CSTAR S30 images with a more than capable desktop computer. CSTAR images are two megapixels, which is relatively tiny. I'm now going to use data purchased for less than a dollar from Telescope Live's extensive collection. These images were captured with their incredibly powerful telescopes located across the planet with image resolutions of up to 60 megapixels. Now that is huge, almost as huge as the credit sale they're currently having, which means the price of these data sets has effectively halved. If you're interested, the link is in the description below. Now, although anyone can purchase this data, the second you make an edit to it, it's yours. You're free to do with it as you please. If you wanna whack it on a t-shirt and start selling it for $40 a piece, go nuts. You can read the full details on their website, but that's just amazing, isn't it? Right, so I'm going to go for, ah, sod it, I'm, I'm just going to go for the Horsehead Nebula dataset acquired last week. That might seem really dumb since they have thousands of deep sky objects to choose from, but since I've just done an edit of the Horsehead Nebula with my C-Star, let's choose this for the similarities. Especially since this software is best demonstrated on Nebulae, since they could be mistaken for image gradients, but it's smart enough to know that they are not. Graxbert cannot stack your raw images by the way, you're going to need to use some other free software like Deep Sky Stacker or Cyril for that. So now that I've purchased my dataset for... hang on let me just convert this real quick. Ah, 68 cents. <sighs> Good lord. You can buy entire image set bundles as well by the way that contain almost days worth of data as opposed to just under an hour's. I'm now going to input my stacked image into Graxbert and I'm starting the timer now. This is a 60 megapixel resolution image, 150 megabytes in file size. And you know what, it'd be a lot faster if I could actually grab the crop bar. Okay, this amount of nebulosity seems like it could be easily mistaken for light pollution, but it's not. However, the background extraction is taking longer this time. Okay, there we go. It's basically just neutralized the image, which is handy, but I suppose it's not entirely necessary when Telescope Live's images are taken from ball to one locations. I doubt they've ever even heard of light pollution. As for the deconvolution tool, I'm just going to try roughly the same settings as I did with the C-S30. I'm pretty sure the FWHM is like a five in these images, but again, feel free to play with it a little. Now that's done a decent enough job in sharpening the image. Now since it is only 50 minutes worth of exposures, there's a fair amount of noise, but certainly nowhere near as much as the C-Stars images. Let's wind the noise setting down to 0.5. Oh great, okay, this has taken a while. 60 megapixels is too much, let's be honest. I'm definitely gonna have to change the title of the video now, aren't I? The denoising took twice as long as every other stage put together. But still, you're never going to be editing pictures bigger than this, right? And it took under five minutes to go from this to this. So even with arguably one of the most pristine data sets that cost a whopping 68 cents worth of Telescope Live credits, this free software was able to significantly improve the image in under five minutes, and well, normal images in under two minutes. I actually feel like there is a lot of dead space in this image, so I'm going to crop almost two thirds of it, which will still give me a 20 megapixel image, which is very impressive. If you want to increase the signal to noise ratio in your image, then you can always take more long exposure images, and in Telescope Live's case, buy some more of their unbelievably cheap observations. Hopefully, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be getting some moon-free clear skies that mean I can test the C-STIS 30 to its full potential. As of right now though, I'm still very impressed. I've attached a pre-order link in the description below. I actually can't believe I haven't mentioned it once this video, but the CSTAR S30 costs just $349, which if you know anything about smart telescopes, is really good. You can also find a link to Telescope Live's page here so that you can make the most of their birthday promotion. Thanks for watching, I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.